Hi guys, today we're going to be doing a lens review of the Zeiss 135mm f2.8 Batis lens for the Sony E-mount. And I'm going to start right now. What's up guys, Photo Fever here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a lens review of the Zeiss 135mm f2.8 Batis lens for the Sony E-mount. Now there are in fact three Sony E-mount lenses. You've got obviously got the Zeiss, but then you've also got the Sony G Master lens, that is 1.8, but you've also got the Sigma 135mm f1.8 art lens. But what one is best out of the three and what one is worth a spot in your camera bag? Let's find out in this lens review. So without further ado guys, let's get started. So what do you get with this lens? Well, I must say the unboxing experience was really, really unique. The way that the Zeiss packages their products is incredibly unique and it's very high attention to detail. So with this lens, you get a front and rear lens cap with this incredibly well-designed lens hood. I must say the overall unboxing experience was really nice and it really does show you the attention to detail that Zeiss put into their products and the design of their products. So the first thing I want to talk about guys is the build quality of this lens. How well made is this lens when it comes to the other lenses on the market? Well, I must say, if you've ever picked up a Zeiss lens before, you know they are incredibly well made. And this lens is just no exception. All of the Batas lenses are made out of this really nice high grade aluminium, which makes them light, but also feels really sturdy in your hand. Now, even the little design quirks of this lens makes this lens quite unique in the way that it looks. So at the moment, you can see that you can see when they've got the lens hood on the lens hood is designed to actually fit with the style of the lens so it doesn't look like something that you've just simply plonked on the front it actually has a lip which again fits with the actual design of the lens which i think makes it look really different to other lenses usually lenses look quite utilitarian in the way that they look they kind of function and look like a lens should. But Zeiss have come in from a slightly different angle, and I must say the overall design parts of this lens makes it really stand out. This lens has also got a digital dial on the front, which looks a lot cleaner than some of the analog dials that you can get on other cameras. Now I would say it's a little bit of a gimmick when you turn the camera on, it shows Zeiss, and then when you're in manual mode, it will actually show the distance to the subject when you're in focusing. But apart from that, it is pretty much useless. But it does look a lot nicer than what other camera brands have done. So I'll definitely give it a good markup for this particular feature. But there is one thing that I wanna mention that makes this lens incredibly unique. All other Sony E-mount lens prime lenses do not have weather sealing, but this one does. And even little details, like if you look at the back, it's actually got a weather sealing gasket, which shows you it's got weather sealing, but that weather sealing gasket is the Zeiss blue that you can find on the logo. So you can see that the little attention to details of this lens, that is what makes this lens really stand out when it comes to the build and the design of this lens. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving it a 10 out of 10 for build quality. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the image quality of this lens. How does this lens fare up to its other competitors, especially as the Sony is a lot more expensive? Well, I must say this lens is probably one of the sharpest lenses I have ever tested. And it's by far the sharpest 135 mil I have ever tested. It is incredibly sharp. And especially if you couple it with a very high megapixel camera, such as this Sony a7R4, that really does show all the little imperfections that lens has. And this lens really does stand up to the test. I would also say this lens is pretty much optically perfect. It suffered from very little chromatic aberration or color fringing, even at wide open. I would also say the lens flaring isn't too bad and actually looks quite creative, especially if you're shooting directly into the lens. Although if you are after a reduction in lens flaring, I would recommend using the lens hood, which does come with this lens. And then the distortion and vignetting is also quite low, as you can see by these graph images. Even at f2.8, you can see that there is very little vignetting. And if you want to completely remove vignetting, go ahead and just step down to f4. And even the distortion throughout the entire focal range is pretty much non-existent. As you can see by the graph, is pretty straight. And all of these images were shot with all of the peripheral illumination and camera corrections turned off. But what makes this lens really special is its bokeh or out of focus areas, coupled with the focal distance 
and having an aperture of f2.8, it creates this really unique look, which is very difficult to create with other lenses. But again, this lens is incredibly sharp as well. So the contrast between the outer focus areas and the sharpness really makes this lens pop, especially when you have a look at the aperture. It has a nine bladed rounded aperture diaphragm, which means if you're shooting at light sources, the bokeh balls are incredibly round, even at lower apertures such as f4 or even f5.6. So if you're wanting to use this lens for either portrait or landscape photography, this lens is going to be ideal for you. There's only one real disadvantage you get with this lens if you purchase it over either the Sony or the Sigma, and that it is aperture. Because of this is designed to be as small and as compact as possible, it only has an aperture of f2.8, which is still a fast aperture, but it's nowhere near as fast as the Sony G Master lens, which has an aperture of f1.8, which creates a really unique look at that focal length. Because theoretically, you could get a 70 to 200 mil zoom lens to offer the same 2.8 aperture. But with that f1.8 that you get with the Sony, you're not gonna be able to kind of replicate that look unless you're using any post-production work. So I must say, this is by far one of the sharpest lenses, but it's not necessarily the best lens if you're wanting to use it for very fast aperture work to either create a shallow depth of field or if you're possibly in a low light situation. So I would say if you're after a very unique looking lens, I would probably get the Sigma lens. But if you're after a small compact lens with still a fast aperture, then I would say the Zeiss lens is the one for you. So for that reason, I'm going to be giving it a 9 out of 10 for image quality. So the next thing I want to talk about is the size and weight of this lens. How does this lens compare to the other faster aperture prime lenses? Well, because this lens is again smaller and lighter, it's going to be better in this regard. This lens is almost half the weight of the Sigma lens, coming in at just 614 grams, where the other two are almost a kilo. The Sony 135mm G Master lens comes in at 950 grams, and the Sigma lens is even heavier, coming in at 1,000. 130 grams. So you can really see how much smaller and lighter this lens is. Even with the lens hood attached, it is a lot smaller than the Sony and Sigma lens pretty much combined. So if you are after a small lightweight lens that isn't necessarily going to be very front heavy on your camera, this lens is going to be perfect, especially if you're coupling it with a Sony camera, which are usually traditionally a lot smaller. But again, if you're after that incredibly unique look, especially with a wide aperture prime lens, then I would say the Sony or the Sigma lens is might be better off. But again, this is definitely better in that regard. So for that reason, I'm going to be giving it an eight out of 10 for size and weight. So the next thing is the image stabilization and focus motor. How quick is this lens when it comes to focusing? Well, because this lens is an f2.8, it has less glass to move, which means the actual ultrasonic motors are going to be able to be a lot more precise, but also quicker at the same time. So if you're after a lens for, let's say, sport or maybe close-up wildlife photography, this lens is doubt, no doubt the best prime lens to buy. But this lens, again, is quite unique in the way that it's designed. This lens is the only lens offering image stabilization. Again, the Sony lens and the Sigma lens do not have image stabilization built in, where this lens does. That means you can shoot down at lower shutter speeds, which might be better for low light photography versus a faster aperture. So you've got to kind of work out the compromise between size and weight and that fast aperture. What would you prefer? Again, I personally would prefer the Zeiss lens, but again, let it up to you. What would you guys prefer? A fast aperture or compromise and get a slightly smaller aperture but a slightly smaller lens. So for that reason, I'm gonna be giving this lens another 10 out of 10 for its unique image stabilization, but also incredibly, I would say lightning fast ultrasonic motor. And last, but most importantly, is the price. How well priced is this lens when it comes to the other two that we've been comparing? Well, actually this lens comes in the middle. So it comes in at 1,289 pounds, which actually makes it fairly well priced, especially when you compare it to the Sony G Master lens. That comes in at a whopping 1,000, £599, 
by far the most expensive out of these three lenses. But do remember guys, this is an f1.8 aperture where the Zeiss is only offering an aperture of f2.8. But what I would say is the best value for money out of the three is the Sigma, coming in at just £1,099, and I have seen it cheaper on a few other websites. And I would say this is the best value for money because you're still getting that amazing f1.8 aperture and it is by far the cheapest out of the three. So I would recommend the Zeiss lens if you are after the sharpest image quality possible. The other two lenses just can't cope with the amazing optics of the Zeiss lens. I would recommend the Sony lens if you're after possibly the overall and overall best lens out of the three. But again, that does come at quite a high price point. And if you're more budget orientated and you're just after an incredibly unique lens, 135mm f1.8, that compression and that aperture is incredibly unique, then I would probably recommend the Sigma lens because of the price point. So because of that, I'm only going to be giving the Zeiss lens a six out of 10 because this lens is a very expensive purchase for even a professional photographer. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there is my lens review of the Zeiss 135mm f2.8 Batis lens for the Sony camera. And I must say, I was incredibly surprised by the quality of the optics. This lens is incredibly sharp. And if you're interested in doing portrait or even uh, beauty photography, this lens is highly recommended coming with an amazing score of 43 out of 50. And because of its amazing image stabilization, I'm going to be giving this lens a silver award for its image quality. The only downside is that fast aperture. The other lenses do offer a larger aperture, which I would highly recommend, especially if you're after an incredibly unique look with that amazing background blur and shallow depth of field. But I must say this lens is still highly recommended for all you professional photographers out there. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really does help my channel grow. Also, guys, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.